Then in November, I went on a trip to Niagara Falls. Oh, the beauty of it was so breathtaking, I wanted to share it with someone whom I admired greatly. Lucretia, my sister, please pardon the liberty I take in pointing my pen towards you this evening. I answered James's letter, and thus begun a very strange romance indeed. James, he, he was such a passionate man, I was not able to express my feelings. Maybe it was my upbringing. Mother rarely kissed me, and I never recall being kissed by my father. But I felt such stirrings in my soul, my body could not express. Her chaste embraces aroused in me no delirium of passion. And she had these foolish notions about women's equality. They were not foolish. In an essay I wrote entitled Women's Station, I raised the question, is it reasonable that the same number of stitches, equally good, should be worth less because made by a woman's weaker hand? <laughs> Men and women should be equally paid. A female student also has a right to voice her opinion. And so at our commencement exercises, I delivered an oration. At the graduation, there were more rumors of James's fickleness. The next five years of one of on-again, off-again love. I went east to attend Williams College in Massachusetts. You know, it was so strange. When I received Crete's letters, great emotion would well up in my soul. Yet when we met, there would be a chill in the air. Dear diary, with a warm, large heart, overflowing with love, at times he overwhelms with affection, and then he turns within himself and I'm neglected. In the summer of 1855, our relationship came to a crossroads. I came back to Hiram and we met. As I read the pages of her diary, my eyes were opened. It stung me to the soul to think that my manner had been such as to give her such suffering. From that journal, I read the depths of affection that I had never known she possessed. A new light had burst upon my soul, and I felt as if the veil which had hung between our hearts was lifted. Oh, Crete, oh, Crete, please. Please, please, I am sorry for all my transgressions. We will write daily, and I want you to join my mother and me in a daily practice we have of reading a specified chapter of the Bible at a given hour every day. That way we will be united in prayer as we will one day be united in matrimony. Dear James, is it true that you did come again, that we talked looked into each other's eyes and down into the depths of our hearts. The darkness, doubt, and cold distrust, which made us both so miserable, formed but the background on which was brought out so clearly, so vividly, that beautiful brightness. Now my own, my loved, my noble James, am I not happy? What a beautiful world I'm living in. All, All my, my life, life before, before has been, been in a mist, a cloud, Oh, how beautiful, beautiful to, to live, live in such, such a world of light and love. Dear Crete, your letter expresses no wish and no thought, no emotion that my own soul does not fully respond with the full tide of my affections. How inexpressibly blissful it would be if I could but take you in my arms tonight and feel the throbbing of your own heart against mine and the thrill of your ardent kiss. To gain money, I had been preaching at the local Disciples of Christ services where I met a Mrs. Maria Learned. She invited me to spend Thanksgiving with her family in Potsenkill, New York. And it was there I met Rancy, Rebecca Selleck, 24 years old, single, and very attractive. We began a relationship about which I told Lucretia, and Rancy too knew of my fondness for Crete. In fact, I invited Crete up to meet Rancy. And again, after months of being apart, our reunion was another disappointment. I received this letter from Crete, and she returned home. How many times have I felt that if you could only love just enough to come and tell me, I could endure the worst. But to see you shrink away as though you could not endure my presence and hide from me the truth was almost more than I could bear. Well, the truth was that Rancy and I had become more involved and more intimate, and she wanted to marry me. 
At my graduation from Williams College in 1856, both Crete and Rancy were in attendance. But I returned to Hiram with Crete because I was to become an instructor at the Eclectic Institute. And although we were near to one another, we may as well have been apart. The mores of the time demanded that we should either get married or stop seeing one another in September. James, if you wish, I release you from our engagement. No, I can't lose you. Just give me more time. 